Hi everyone, Adam Steele from Hot Pulse Studios here, and today is the start of quite a big series of videos in association with the Produce Like a Pro Academy. Uh, in the past, I've done videos on these things. This is an upside down Raspberry Pi. This is the Raspberry Pi 400, which at time of making this video is the latest and greatest little uh, inexpensive computer that you can get that can run pretty much anything on a very tight budget. Now in the past we've done videos about setting these up and getting going with installing Reaper which is my favourite production software but we didn't get very much further because there wasn't really any support for any of the more interesting sounding plugins and processors, sound effects, and that's changing. Now there's a thing called Toucan Studios set of plugins uh, that are free, and I mean, you can donate to those guys and why not, but you can arguably make a full mix of a song on a Raspberry Pi, which means that the old excuse of not having enough money to you know, have a full mixing setup is kind of going out the window now. So we're going to go through what we need, how we're going to do it, and then on the Produce Like a Pro Academy, we're then going to actually mix this song, and then we're going to come back here to, to my channel to show how much of the processing was used and what we needed to get that mix finished. So the one thing we need and the other thing we probably should have is we obviously need the Raspberry Pi. This is a slightly kind of scuffed Raspberry 400, which is the one inside the keyboard, comes with its own mouse, as seen here. And the other thing that you should probably have is some sort of audio interface. I've got the Audient ID14. This is the Mark 1 because I've uh, loaned the Mark 2 version that I had to uh, a very up and coming promising young musician. Uh, you can see the ID14 Mark II is in the background there. I could have used that, but I wanted to use the one that was more affordable to kind of make the point. So let's switch so you can see the Raspberry Pi. I'll just hide that for a second because it helps if you use the right mouse. Uh, this is what you see when you install the Raspberry Pi operating system and nothing else. Now, there are loads of videos about installing Raspberry Pi OS. It's really easy. Uh, but the fact is this is installed and clean. All I've done is set up my Wi-Fi so that's connected and the web browser already comes with it so I've not done anything else. So from there we're going to skip up to this point. Now we're going to install Reaper and some of the other tools that we're going to use to make these mixes happen. Feel free to do this along with me. One thing that is worth mentioning at this point is that the usual Raspberry Pi OS is 32-bit. Uh, there is a new one that is 64-bit, and the new Raspberry Pis are 64-bit. I've decided to go with 64-bit. Don't know if it makes any difference in terms of audio production, but that's what I'm playing with today. So at certain points, you'll see me talk about which file to download in certain circumstances. So just keep an eye on that just to make sure you're downloading the right version for your Raspberry Pi version. Um, if you've installed from the Raspberry Pi automatic installer and you've gone with the default options, you're probably on 32-bit at this point. So if in doubt, go with those. If they don't work, then it's probably the 64-bit one that you wanted. So I'm opening Chromium, which is the browser, and the first place to go is reaper.fm, Reaper's own website. We're going to download Reaper, and down here there are choices. Now on the Raspberry Pi we are running Linux, which is down the bottom here, and there are a couple of uh, choices. We don't press the big green download button, because that's for desktop and laptop standard systems. We're using these ones down here. So if you're using the regular Raspberry Pi, uh, then you're wanting to use the ARM V7L. If you're using the 64-bit version, the one that I'm using, that's Linux Arch 64 We give that a click, wait for it to download, and now we're going to go straight to the file manager at the top and go into our downloads folder. Now there's a lot of stuff here already. I'm just going to delete a lot of this just to make it much cleaner looking. 
Now that file we'll come back to in a minute, but what we have right now is the Reaper. I'm on 651 because that's what just came out this week. And so I'm going to right click and go extract here. And it's going to take a few seconds to spit that out into a folder, which is this one here, Re Re Reaper Linux Arch64. Open that up and we're just going to go ahead and install Reaper. So we double click on the install reaper.sh. It says this text file seems to be an executable script. It is. What do we want to do? We want to execute it in terminal. So we click that and it comes up with a scary looking thing, which if you've used Linux before, it's not scary to you at this point. If you've not used anything like Linux, this may be a little alien, but it will walk you through. There are a few options here. We want to install Reaper. So we type I for install Reaper. Enter. Now, uh, to install Reaper to opt will require sudo password entry. That's the one we want. That's what I like to do. Number one. Desktop integration, yes, absolutely. So we get icons in the kind of start menu. Would we like to do a sim link? Why not? Proceed with installation, yes, please. Now, a few seconds later, that is done. We don't need this installer anymore. What we can do is go into our little Raspberry menu at the top and under sound and video, there's Reaper. Installed, ready to go. We can open that, it'll take a few seconds to load up. And that says not free, blah, 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 complain, complain, complain. Uh, I already have a full commercial license for Reaper. I, I suggest that most people get the discounted license. It's $60. You probably should. Um, if need be, you can hit still evaluating. I'm just going to do that because it's quicker while I'm doing this. Because after I've done this series of videos, I'm probably going to format this uh, SD card in here again anyway and do something different with it. That's one of the joys of the Raspberry Pi is you can just pave it and start all over again and use it as a toy to play with. That's how I like to use it anyway. But one thing we do want to do straight away from Reaper is go to options at the top, go right to the bottom and find show Reaper resource path in Explorer Finder. And that's going to come up with this folder that's got loads of stuff in there. So anything that we want to install that is extra will go in there. So I'm going to go back to Reaper and just go to file and quit because there are a few more things that we want to install. The first thing I want to install is the SWS slash S and M extensions. These are, it kind of adds extra functionality to Reaper. I didn't use these for a long time, but then I was shown a few cool tricks that I could do that this, it's free, so you may as well. Um, it adds all sorts of really cool stuff. So we're under Linux again. ARM32 is your usual Raspberry Pi. I'm using ARM64. So I click on that and I get another download link. This time though, I'm going to go into our downloads folder. Where is it? SWS. And I'm going to open this. Now it's got grooves, user plugins, and scripts in this uh, file. It's, it's a tar file, but it's essentially a zip file. It's the same thing. Same idea anyway, and I'm going to copy all three of these over to here. Oh, error occurred. Right, well, let's try right click extract two and then put them in the downloads folder, uh, make a new folder, call it SWS, extract them in there. Open, extract, there we go. So now I can copy the Groove script and user plugins into here. Uh, apply this option over write all. And they're now in the uh, Reaper user config system. The last one that we need, and the really important one for a lot of this stuff that I've started using and never used to is Repack, which is at repack.com. So if you've ever used Linux or if you've ever used the Mac OS, the Mac store on, on your Mac or even the Windows store, ugh, it's a thing, it works, it, it's easy, let's be honest, but this is the same kind of thing for Reaper. So we're going to download the Linux, for me, ARM64 bit, for you likely the ARM32 bit. And that's a single file that has come up in downloads. That is that Reaper repack arch.so 
and we're going to put that in the user plugins folder. As you can see, I've already done that. Unfortunately, I already tried to film this video once and I had a technical issue. Uh, so from there, that's what we need in terms of installing stuff. And the last thing that I use for mixing is a set of impulse responses, not for cabinets, but for reverbs uh, from uh, Samplicity that unfortunately no longer kind of exists, but due to the wonders of the internet, this one, due to the wonders of the internet, it still exists. So if you Google um, Bricasti Impulse Samplicity, it'll bring you a page like this from resoundsound.com or some others. And the link that you click on in here brings you to a version of the Samplicity website, which no longer exists, using web.archive.org's Wayback Machine, which is really useful because it means we can find websites that no longer exist and thankfully they've saved all the files too. Now this was donationware, but like I say, their website no longer exists. So if, I mean, if you want to donate to them, I don't know if that'll actually go anywhere, but um, that's possible. But what I like to do is download the, for the sample rate I'm working at, which in this case, I'm working at 48 kilohertz, but you can use 44.12. Uh, you can download the 32 bit, uh, files from here, which is what I did. And it took several minutes because it's 400 megabyte file downloading from a website that doesn't exist anymore. But there are other formats on here. If you want to use some strange old format that they're really not used anymore, let's be honest, you can download that. And then I just like to have, let's look at my downloads folder. There it is. So Samplicity, I'm going to right click that and go extract here. And then when that's done, because that's going to take a minute, because that's got thousands of files in it. There's only really one or two that I really use, but I use them a lot on these older systems where CPU usage is a real concern. So I'm now going to cut this folder and I'm just going to put it in the documents. So in the documents folder, I know where it is. It's easy to find because then in Reaper, we're going to be calling on a couple of those files and having them somewhere where it's easy to find. It's going to make our lives easier. Also, there is a folder in here called Tom Sawyer because that's the song we're going to be mixing on the Produce Like a Pro Academy. Now, the two can plugins. Let's open Reaper and let's close the browser. Let's close a lot of these. And... We're going to look for Toucan Studios, T-U-K-A-N, Toucan Studios. And the link we want to follow here is the stash.reaper.fm for Toucan Studios. And we want to click on the Toucan Studios plugins. Now I'm going to leave that exactly where it is for now, because that's absolutely fine. We're going to use this using Repack. So we're going to open Reaper now. So we go to Sound and Video Reaper. Now, the first thing it will probably do to you is it will complain that, I'm going to move that down as well, it will complain that your audio interface isn't set up. Now, if you're familiar with using Jack, the system Jack, it's really powerful on Linux. Go ahead and use Jack. I find it terrifying and find it difficult to use. I'm sure it wouldn't be after just a little playing with it, but there is another option called ALSA that if I click that, I've got by USB my ID4 plugged in here and I can just choose the ID4 from a list because I've got the HDMI audio there as well. Um, I'm working in 48 kilohertz, leaving the block size as is because that's, that's to do with how much latency there is on monitoring and mixing we we don't really care about that. Uh, bit depth I've put at 24 because I, I don't see the, the use in running at 32-bit when interfaces only do 24-bit input and output. And everything else should be fine. You hit OK on that. And if you're doing it right, you should be able to hit play. And in the top right corner here, you get all these nice pretty numbers that basically tell you it's working. And that is that. So the Toucan Studios, we're going to use Repack. For using Repack, we go to the Extensions menu, and there's Repack right at the top. So if we go to Browse Packages, you will see 
loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of options of things you can add to Reaper that are from people who are developers outside of the core Reaper team. And the fact that there are loads and loads of options here is great. If there's something really, really specific and niche that Reaper doesn't natively do that you want, there's a very good chance that somebody has made a script or a theme or an effect or something that you can get from here. And that's really, really cool. And you can search through here if you know what you're looking for. You can go to Reaper's stash or the forums or wherever to find out about all this kind of stuff. Eventually, um, you will find more stuff than is even in this list. Because, like I was saying before, the two can studios, they have their own repository. So this link here, the raw.githubusercontent.com, I want to copy that whole thing. And I want to add that into Repack. So we'll go back to Reaper, Extensions Repack, and go to Import Repositories, and then paste that there. Hit OK. And that's in there now. Now if I go to Browse Packages, there are more in there. So if I go to the filter at the top, I know I'm searching for Toucan, T-U-K-A-N. And it comes up, these are all the Toucan Studios effects. So what you would want to do is shift and click as many of these as you want. I like all of them. Right click and go to install update selection. I already did that, so that's grayed out. But I can uninstall them from here if I want, reinstall them if there's something wrong. And that then when I hit OK will do that. If there are new versions of these plugins that come out uh, in the meantime between me producing this video and you seeing it, then you will just get the latest versions there. And if new versions come out while you're using it, go to repack and synchronize packages and everything you have, if there's updates for it, it will just install the updates. Done. Easy. So now it's going to check everything for me by synchronizing. Nothing needed updating. We are done. So I can now find that folder for Tom Sawyer. These are all the tracks. I'm going to make this project that I've got to 175 BPM because 175 was what I could see in the notes there. I'm going to move this around a little so you can see the BPM just above my head and type in 175. There we go. Now that's set. That should make life easier for bringing everything into a click. And that's why people add BPMs into mix files names. So I'm going to drag all these into Reaper. Uh, it's going to ask me separate tracks or single track. I want them on separate tracks. I'll move them all right to the start. I'm going to move the performance meter over. And now, if everything's set right, I should be able to put on my headphones. It's still build, building the uh, peaks so we can see all the files. This is because it's loading off the the inbuilt micro SD card on here as well. It's quite slow. If we were to plug quite a fast SSD into one of the USB 3 slots, this would be way faster. That's just a limitation of the drive itself. And if I hit play, I'm going to turn off that click and hit play on everything else. Nice. So everything's playing and that's already using up to 10% of the CPU just to play them because it's, it's quite intense on a system like this. Poor thing. I can now close down Chromium, which may be eating a little bit of CPU. I'm going to do a couple of customizing things that I like. I'm going to go to View Peaks Display Settings and change it to Spectral Peaks, which is going to take a little more time, but it means that I can have all the pretty colors so that I can see things like sibilance and bass rumble and all those kind of fancy things in glorious multicolor. And you'll see some of them, like the, the drum hits, will just come up grey, but some of the stuff like the vocals will come up very differently. Now, this is the point where we start getting into straight mixing territory, and that's where I'm going to go to the Produce Like a Pro Academy, and on a regular basis we're going to drop videos on how to mix bass, how to mix drums, how to mix the guitars, how to mix the vocals, 
how to deal with the master bus, etc. And we're going to use the Toucan plugins, the inbuilt Reaper stock plugins, and those uh, impulse responses that I downloaded. And there are other videos on how to use those, but we'll come back to here in just a second with many, many hours having passed. See you soon. All right, so many hours later, having filmed the entire series, I have now mixed this song using loads of stuff on the drums, EQs, compressors, and the like. Uh, plenty of stuff on the bass, uh, again, compressors, uh, EQs, the guitars using some very clever ducking kind of like a track spacer, uh, using a Toucan Studios verb ducker instead and using it in a really weird creative kind of way. Uh, there's a synth group with some distortion and there's a vocal that's got the distressor type plugin and a deesser, an EQ, and there's a lot of copies of something because everything is going through kind of mix bus and console emulation that's controlled remotely from the master bus. And there's also now the reverb, which I have loaded in. There is uh, a separate lexicon uh, style drum plate and a heavily pre-delayed uh, vocal plate with a much shorter kind of plate sound with a lot of the low end uh, kind of scooped out. And overall, it sounds a bit like this. Sounds great. So that short room reverb that we downloaded. We've got the drum plate lexicon. Doing exactly what it should. Vocal plate is on actually most of the other instruments. The poor thing is struggling to play by the way, because I don't know if you can see the CPU usage around here, but it's 60 to 70% of the poor CPU in this Raspberry Pi. And that's with some of the Tom tracks frozen so that they don't take more CPU space. In fact, if I turn all the reverbs and delays off, and then on, and before you say, oh, the original was better, it was, it was one of the defining albums of the era for me. Uh, but I just did this on a computer that is worth less than a hundred pounds using an interface that's probably less than a hundred pounds on a desk in a spare room. They used the first SSL 4000 console that had got into Canada. They used the state of the art everything, and I just did this in a room. <laughs> you know, yes, I could get this better myself as well if I spent hours on it. Maybe if I had a decent monitoring system in here, which I don't, that's what Studio A is for. But yes, the fact that I can do this in a very relatively short amount of time, this has taken me about half a day to do, including filming each section as a tutorial. Uh, which, like I said earlier, is available at the Produce Like a Pro Academy, being released section by section, uh, then this is something anybody can do at home. All you have to do is download the stuff I downloaded and just practice. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, get your chops down, work on lots of material, uh, do it over and over, try and improve your monitoring situation like these. I've used these Sennheiser 650s for a decade, that's why they're rusty, um, but just get to know your craft and do it over and over and over. There is nothing stopping any of you now from being one of the top mixers in the world. I mean, as you get 
better and more recognition. You tend to get more jobs. You buy nice things. Uh, the, the nice things do make your life that little bit easier each time, sure. But none of them are big roadblocks in your way these days where it used to be that you needed the half million pound or half million dollar set of equipment. Now you don't. So yeah, big thanks to Produce Like a Pro for spurring me on to do this set of videos for the Academy and this one for my own YouTube channel. And uh, big thanks to you at home for joining in and having some fun. Uh, join us at the Academy where we do lots of this kind of stuff and there's a large group of people who are really enthusiastic about helping each other out, teachers, students, people kind of in between journeymen helping everyone out as well. And yeah, hope to see you there. Hope to see you on my channel again more. So, you know, I'll like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Thanks everybody. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Hey everyone. That might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hot Pole Studios. See you there.